What is going on beautiful people? So I feel like it's been a while since we did a nano fish tank. I'm talking proper nano because usually I've been doing the nanos and they've been for shrimp, haven't they? So for instance, we recently set up the shrimp mountain. We also set up the shrimp cave here. And next to that, we've got the shrimp bubbles. Now everything is just running beautifully. It's working a treat, loving all of it. Oh, I've put some wood down here. This is the tank we're gonna be escaping today. I just chucked some wood in. It's not set on anything yet, but I wanna do something with wood, definitely. Because for instance, no wood, no wood, no wood. I haven't used wood in escape for ages. Yeah, so here's what I'm toying with. I think it's called juniper wood. Um, there's a few bits there and then obviously there's those in there as well just fiddling around with like a triangular composition again not sure yet but i am actually quite liking that i just want to make sure the pieces of wood i've got will fit in that tank it's a pretty small tank look so it's really hard to get like a scapegoat in a small area and for it to look decent you've got to be a little bit minimalist but you can make it work now this tank behind me has been set up for rather a long time now this was a dirted tank that i did with pond aqua soil so not like the balls we normally get it's like actual stuff you put in a pond baskets and on the bottom yeah i thought i'd give it a go and you know what it's been a massive a massive success in terms of plant health color all that sort of thing i think there's quite a lot of iron in the pond aqua soil because all the reds have been really really red even though i haven't got massively high light on this i mean i have recently just trimmed it all back but all of these colorful red bits you see are very, very vibrant, considering the fact there's no CO2, you know, and it's not really getting that much light. The light's all the way at the back, the moss is crazy. The Ludwigia, look, growing out of the tank there and just spreading all the way across over here. So that's got me thinking, you know, I've only done this once in this tank. I did it in another tank as well, but I just did it way too wrong. I didn't put it low down. Basically, you need to put the Aquasol really low down. Oh, I'm not seeing it there either. You need to put the pond aquasol really low and then just cap it right off of a good couple of inches. They say an inch of soil to two inches of sand. So that's what we're gonna try. Yeah, and I've got it out here. This is the stuff. Hang on, let me get in there. There we go, look. Well, it's like proper soil you'd put in your plant pots at home, isn't it? <laughs> Right, that's about an inch, probably a little bit less, but I mean, given the volume of the tank and the amount of water we're gonna have, I think that's plenty of nutrients for any of the plants that are gonna go in. Now we wanna start capping this now, and I'm just gonna use a little base layer on top that isn't gonna be shown, so it doesn't really matter what you use. Um, gravel, you're like a fine gravel or a sand, I would suggest, because coarse gravel can allow stuff to sort of come through, can't it? And I've just got some of this down in this bucket, look, so it's kind of like a coarse sand, I would say. Not quite a gravel, but not fine either. So that's that front area sort of capped in, and I actually really like doing about an inch thick of sand in the foreground like that. I think it looks so much better as a border for the whole thing. Now, as we go back, I'm gonna obviously raise the, the height of that capping layer, because one inch isn't enough, but there obviously isn't any soil at the front because we scraped it away. So as we go back, get higher and higher, and it should end up about that high at the back. There we go, looking good. Now we've got an absolutely solid base to work from. I can start manipulating that wood now and getting it in there, um, and then I can place rocks on top of it to pin it all down. We don't want too much hardscape, remember, because it's such a small tank. I wanna put a decent amount of plants in and let the plants scape the whole thing for us. So initially, I'm just gonna lay the wood in how I had it right at the start, which was kind of like that, I guess, yeah. And then I had another piece, like this one, sort of, next to it creating a bit more angle yeah <laughs> already i like that and to be honest just the two pieces might be enough it's such a small scape isn't it they're very sort of impactful 
you know, they draw your eye all over the tank. I might bring them um, forward a little bit more though, so I can just put stems behind them, because at the moment, they're pretty much at the back touching the, gra uh, the glass. Not the grass, there's no grass there. <laughs> but that's what we want. We want it everywhere, but still with room. So just come forward a little bit like that one. If I just do that, basically just solved it. There we go, that one forward, and then that one resting on it like that there we go so now i've got room to plant behind it as well it's going to be fiddly but all nano tanks are aren't they now in terms of rocks i just want to go for a couple of dark pebbles for to be honest just in that little gap there and a little one out here just for some focal points because the rest i want plants there we go nothing complicated at all so far right i mean that is the idea but i'm going to need to do something about this wood because that's just going to float now that piece is on top of the bottom piece, so I've just got a couple of rocks I'm just gonna put on top, and then I can attach like Anubias and things like that to these rocks and you won't even see them. So yeah, all looking a little bit weird at the moment, but I've got some more of this stuff, or well, not quite the same look, down in this bucket. Um, I'm gonna use this just to fill out the back section a little bit more. I feel like we need more at the back. I wanna bring it up higher in that corner as well, just so that we can have some more different plants coming out of that section. Right, in all honesty, I've banked that up quite a lot there, and we're not seeing any of this, none of this layer at all. We might see a little bit of this in the foreground, but hopefully I can pull it back as I put in a new layer. So on top of this is going to be a much more clean looking sand. Well, I say sand, it's this here. It's more of a fine gravel or very coarse sand, I'd say. Let me get some out. There we go. Look at that. So I, I think it will give like a real sort of nice presentation. I'll put um, some kind of detail stones around it as well. Okay, there we go that has given us a sort of much more clean look i would say but it's too clean it kind of looks like snow at the moment so now i'm going to put like smaller detail stones around it all i'm going to do something different and go for like quite a contrast to the sand and the rocks uh, i've just got a few little pebble things that i've bought that I, I don't know if it's going to work but hopefully it will yeah so i've got like this stuff and then like a finer one as well uh, coarser pieces around the rocks and then a finer one scattered about So a little bit messy at this stage, but it'll look a lot better when we start planting. I'll plant into the areas that are tight, sort of rocks, leave some of the whiter sort of sections showing, or I might just plant the whole lot, to be honest. <laughs> I'm not even sure yet, but it is definitely time to make a start. We're gonna start with the main focal point, which is gonna be, I'm gonna go with some trident fern because we need to keep all of our plants small scale in this one, because obviously it's such a tiny tank. Trident fern in that back corner as like a, a section would look really good to start. So both these plants are from Tropica, amazing quality as you can see, really easy to prepare. Take off the rock wall, take off the rock wall, take off the rock wall. <laughs> it was actually even easier than I thought it was going to be to be honest. Now there's a couple of things we can do here with these plants. Um, one of them is which is attach them to a rock like that and then I'll stay in place or, I mean I can't do it on this one but you know for you guys to know for yourselves, if you've got more hardscape than this you can just cram it in gaps and it just sort of locks in. But because we've gone quite minimalist and I want it in that section, I need to put it to the rock first. And as always, we're using our cyanoacrylate super glue gel from Gorilla, who don't sponsor the channel, but should. Um, <laughs> this is completely safe for fish, shrimp, and everything like that, guys. Doesn't harm the plants either. This is the bottom rhizome plant, so we want to stick it down here somewhere, and then you can just attach it to the rock. All good. Thank you. 
I mean, yeah, look at that. We've just got instant impact, haven't we? I could, you could leave it like that. <laughs> like, it looks really good, doesn't it? Like, as a simplified sort of scape. But, oh, no, 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 no. We are not leaving it like that. So, in this gap, right in the middle, oh, I've misted it all up, but right underneath, there's like a sort of shelf. And I'm going to do the same thing I just did with the uh, Java fern there, but with some of this Anubius Petite down here and the Busa Philandra that you can kind of make out behind it. I'm going to attach each one to a small rock and then I can just place them all underneath and create a border and it looks really good when you do it like that. Okay, there we go. Look, each one has got its own little stone base and that means we can place it wherever we want. Love doing it like this. So hopefully you can see what I was going for there. I was trying to use it as kind of like a shelf, if you like, to lift up the uh, trident fern a little bit. It was, it'll rise up anyway when it, the water's in there. We might need to trim off some of these as well. Some of the leaves are really long and that could make it look a bit more cramped than it needs to be, plus shed too much shade. We'll see how we go when we fill it up. Speaking of which, I'm probably gonna do that now because next up is all the, actually no, no, foreground plants. Let's go to town with foreground plants. I've got some nice, Hydrocottle Japan down here and also Monte Carlo in there. So I'm just gonna do this whole front area with those two and that should look so good. More so the Hydrocottle Japan or Chipotio, uh, however you pronounce it, um, in the backer sections and like just little bits of detail. The rest can be with the uh, Monte Carlo. Okay, there we are, all the foreground plants are in. I now wanna fill it up so I can plant the background area. I mean, I like doing it this way. I like to have the water in so I can see how they're sitting. Some people just stick it all in now and fill it up, but I mean, I wanna go for that sort of gradual length so I can get each stem the right height straight away. I mean, if you're doing this at home and you had shorter plants, it wouldn't matter because it'll all grow in, but I have the ability to do it like really nice from, from like straight away for instant impact. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. Actually, you know what, now is a really good time to add in the filter um, before we put stems or anything like that in because we need A, to see where it needs to go and how much space we need and B, how it's gonna flow. I've got the same filter as I've got up here on the shrimp bubble tank. It's just a tiny little one, look, but it does such a great job. It's one of my favorite new filters. It is the Nycru Magi, it's the smallest one, Magi filter. I don't know why it's magic, I don't know what that means. Is that magnetic or magic? Who knows? All I do know is that it works well, so that is going on. God, look how bright it all looks. It looks great, doesn't it? There we go, like really full of bubbles at the moment. The water in my studio is so oxygenated that whenever I fill up a tank, it does this, everything gets covered in bubbles. But that is a good amount of flow look. Just gently flicking the uh, trident fern there. We can see that it's coming along here. I don't know if the camera's picking up, but it's like a rotation, goes back around. That's what you want, that sort of rotation, so ideal. So it has now been a few days since I planted everything and filled up with water everything's now crystal clear. Look at that, there's no sort of bubbles on anything. And I can see that the plants are trying to creep and grow nicely and there's not a spot of algae anywhere as well. So feel like we're already gonna do well with this tank. But now we can start to put in the background plants. I wanna start with the focal area. I'm thinking here, I want some red here, just one little bit of red, that's it. And then some shorter plants down this section. So we've got that negative area up there and stems in that back area. So we we'll start with like Ludwigia, Rotala HR, all the reds, just a mix of them, stick them in that bit. There we go, nothing too big and flash. Like I said, I just want that little hint of it because the fish that are going in here have got a lot of color on them already, so I don't want it to take away from them. Um, next up, that little area there, Liliopsis brasiliensis.
Looking good, looking good. That area will all fill in nice and thick. We could trim it all and just keep that sort of line going all the way up. And then I just need a few more stems in that background area and then that'll be it. I don't want to overdo it. We've already got a lot of plants really in such a small area, but that is the look I was going for. There we go, looking sweet and now basically ready to go and get some fish to put into this awesome new nano tank. Oh, I didn't have it recording. <laughs> I didn't, I just did a whole thing and it wasn't even recording. It sounded awful anyway. Right, pretend I didn't do this. So, <laughs> so Matthew, Matthew, you're here. Oh, surprise. Good afternoon. <laughs> okay, so Matt's told me about these awesome what are they describe what are they called? Koi tuxedo Martin? Yeah. Koi, Koi tuxedo. tuxedo guppies. Koi tuxedo guppy. Oh, I'm just gonna show them. I'm just gonna show oh, let me spin the camera around. Here they are. Look at these. Absolutely crazy. They're like so I right, we just done that little thing. I, I already saw them obviously, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I accidentally saw them because if we stand back, yeah, they are. let me turn down all the brightness of what it actually looks like in here. Look at how much they're glowing versus everything else. I've never seen this. You guys were surprised as well, weren't you, when you yeah. unboxed them? They're not normally, yeah, Martin thought they were rummy noses at the, the, for the first sort of few seconds because of how bright they are on the front end. But yeah, they, um, wow. they don't normally come in as nice as that. But then these are some of the new ones we are trying, so. Uh, Look at that female, she is gone pop. Yeah, they are. They're gonna have a few babbies, definitely. So are these the same as the koi ones that I had koi endlers? Yes, yours are koi endlers. These are a standard guppy, so these are your full-sized guppy, but a koi version. So it's just, yeah, they've bred the same colorations into them. So I've got a little nano that I'm doing. So it won't be suitable for a big group, but as a little breeding tank. Yeah, nice. Um, so I can get a few more of these. I mean, the, the females there are ready to go already. So hopefully within a few days, I'll have some babies yeah. in I can bring up and I can put the adults into the, some of the bigger tanks, but it'd be a good little catch sort of tank, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. You know, a male and a couple of females in there, just, you know, a nice little trio of them. Okay, Maybe but uh, yeah, I do actually, yeah. Two females to male, so then there's, any aggression is gonna be split between the two females. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be awesome. Okay, bag them up. Yes, good. That male's got blue all the way down his body. Sweet. I think once this comes on the video, People are going to come in here to get them, aren't they? Yeah. If they're not already gone. Oh, I, I wouldn't be. So I am now back from the fish shop and I'm also a firm believer in honesty is the best policy and I've been back from the fish shop for a few days. I've got the fish down here in this tank. I just wanted to settle them in, make sure everything was okay. Um, turns out they're doing absolutely great. No babies have popped out yet, which is good. That's really good because I want to move them over to this tank so that then if babies come into it, um, then I can remove the parents and we've just got loads of like tiny, tiny little ones that have got a massive or greater chance at least of full survival. Because even though guppies are pretty good parents, aren't they, female guppies and the males, but um, sometimes you do see the numbers dwindle if you don't take out the adults. But the thing is they produce so many that usually you know, quite a lot survive, which will probably be the case here as well. Yes, 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 here they are down the bottom, doing so, so well. Um, they're eating, they're out and about, they're exploring everything. Really pleased with them. There's the male at the back, smaller, female, massive belly, female, massive belly. Um, in fact, that one actually looks like it's smaller now, so maybe we have got some babies down here somewhere. Well, I can't see any at the moment, but anyway, time will tell. Time to put you guys in your new tank. As much as you seem to be loving this one, I think you'll love the next one as well. And so will the babies that come out. We've got to get babies. I mean, it's, it's, it's so easy. If you guys are interested in breeding a fish and uh, you don't know how to do it or conditions, if you put guppies in water, your tank is cycled, you will get babies. You know, you need males and females, of course, but, <laughs> but it will happen. And definitely one of them. Look at that, the colors. Wow, let's put them in. Okay, here we go, super rare gucky, guppies going in, not guckies, guppies. <laughs> Look at that, brilliant. Okay, okay, they're calm, they're calm, they're just chilling at the moment. And remember, like I say, I don't really, well, possibly, you could probably keep this as a long-term setup for just a few guppies like we've got here. I would be okay with that. 
Um, somewhere on the internet will probably say that that is not okay. But for me, you've got a good filter, a ton of plants. And if you wanted to put three nice guppies in here or a little group of endless or something like that, I'd say this tank is plenty big enough for that. It's all about quality really, isn't it? It's not like it's just a bit of gravel at the bottom and nothing else. It's, it's a proper little nature aquarium for these guys. Hello, little female. You're going to produce a ton of babies for me? I mean, not at the moment you're not because you're all freaking out. I'll come back and see you guys in a minute. Yay, there we go, look, they're a lot more comfortable now, they're all moving around. Now remember, this is brand new setup, brand new filter, there's no beneficial bacteria in here. Now what I could do, and what I will do actually, is take a sponge from one of the other setups into the water, give it a massive squeeze. Now you might not have, you know, another sponge to do that or another tank with, so instead, I can also use API Quick Start. This stuff, I use it all the time, I used to use it more obviously because I didn't have um, all the tanks that I already had cycled media. But even still, even when I do a new setup and I do that, I still use some of this. It's, you don't need a lot of it, really. Um, so when you first put it in a minute, I'll put in like a full capful for this size. And then what I'll do tomorrow is I'll just do a little water test. If I show any traces of anything, I'll just do a quick water change and then add it again. And that just sort of keeps everything ticking along until all the beneficial bacteria has colonized around the plants, the gravel, in the filter the lot. Now with a small stocking like this, we're gonna be absolutely fine to be honest. Um, I've never had any problems when using Quick Start, even in tanks that I've had a few more fish as well. Now this isn't a sponsored post or anything, but you know, it's a great product. I think you guys should use it and have it on hand. So for instance, this tank here, which I've recently set up, this is an ecosystem tank. I used Quick Start and there's a lot of fish in here and we've had zero problems at all. So it's looking good. And these are wiped down the glass. There's a little bit of algae going on, uh, but it's just dust algae. Plants are going great and it's just coming out the back end of a diatom phase. And I know that because two days ago, this S Repens here was covered in diatoms and now it's completely clean. Yes. So yeah, nice big shrink in a bottle. One cap full, in you go. Job done. Sorry guys. <laughs> Now I'd usually add in some leaf zone as well to give nutrients into the water column, but I'm not sure how nutrient dense that soil is that we put in. And I don't want to sort of risk upsetting the balance. So at the moment, I'll just leave it at that and see how we get along or get on, see how it does. <laughs> Thank you. 